Welcome to another video. In this video, we will not be doing any calculus or any tetration. What we're doing is just naming a bunch of numbers. Look at these numbers. They all have special names, special names, special names. But they are huge numbers, the kinds of numbers you do not come across in your everyday life. Some of you have never seen numbers this big. Some of you have seen numbers this big in your dreams. I just want you to be able to name big numbers when you dream of them the next time. Okay, ask a mathematician, what is this? He's just going to say it's 10 to the 9th. It is so easy to understand and so easy to write and so easy to explain. It's just one followed by nine zeros, which is clearly what we see. But ask someone else, what number is this? If you asked me when I was growing up as a kid, I would say this is a thousand million. And then someone else will say, come on, that's a billion. And then someone else comes up and says, no, that is a milliard. It is a thousand million, which you call a milliard. So you see there are different ways of naming the same number. And that is one reason why you should not try to name it if you can write it. But some of us are stubborn. You just want to name it. You want to know how to name it. number. You want to know what a zillion is. You want to know what a Google is or what a centillion is or what a Googleplex is. Well, if you're interested in all that, you should keep watching. Well, if you're not interested, Still keep watching. Let's get into the video. So let's start with the smallest number we've got today, a billion. That's how I would say it today. And I think by convention these days and scientifically, this is going to be a billion. But no scientist says billions. We just say the number of zeros in standard form, right? So I would say this is a billion, which is after 1000, you have two sets of three zeros. That's actually the naming convention, which I'm going to explain now. But I know that growing up as a kid in a British system, we would say it is a thousand million because the British believed a billion is a million million. I think that's changing now because if you say a British billionaire, you're actually talking about a thousand millions these days, okay? It's not a million million, but the naming convention still lasts. Now, before I continue, almost every country has their own way, not almost, but there are regions that just have their own ways of naming numbers. They have symbols representing titanic numbers. So the British system, the continental Europe, America, you have China has their own system. They China have their own system. Um, Japan have their, the Japanese have their own system. The Indians have their own system. The Koreans have their own system. And America have their own system. So you, you, you see everybody has a system. So basically, this is what we have. A, a milliard is the same thing as what you call a billion these days, but it's a thousand million. So if you ever hear the word milliard, this is what it means, or what we currently call a billion, because it is not up to a billion in those days. Now, let me explain what this nomenclature is. So for the two common systems of nomenclature, the most dominant ones are the um, what you call the short convention and the long convention. And what it means is these ones increase once you add another set of three zeros. If you multiply by a thousand, the name changes. If you multiply by a thousand, the name really goes from, you see, it, you have the eared version of it. So you have the million and the milliard, then you get to a billion. As you can see, the billion in this convention is different from the billion in this convention because this one is changing by six zeros. You have to add six zeros to the previous zeros in order to change the name fully. Otherwise, you have to go in between. So a thousand million is a milliard, a thousand billion is a billiard, but a thousand billion is a trillion, and a thousand trillion is a quadrillion, and that's how the whole thing goes on forever. I'm going to show you um, how the whole names are generated. So basically, this is how you name big numbers. You just keep going until you get to as many zeros as possible. They never end. 
Let's talk about this number. If you ever took chemistry in high school, you came across the number Avogadro's number. It is the number of fundamental particles in any substance that you have, whether it's a molecule or an atom or a compound. Whatever you have, this is the number of basic fundamental particles. I want us to give it a shot. Let's try and name it. We're going to write the whole number and give it a name. This is Avogadro's number. Just imagine if every student in high school had to type this out every time they used it for a computation. Life would not be cool. Or if it was written in words. Let's try and write this in words, okay? This is going to be, well, we're going to follow the short convention where we change the name every thousand, okay? So we have a thousand, million, we have billion, trillion, we have... After try, it's going to be quadrillion, and this would be quintillion, this is going to be sextillion, and this is 602 sextillion, 214 quintillion, and 76 quadrillion. That's it. So Avogadro's constant could have been named 602 sextillion. 214 quintillion, 76 quadrillion. That doesn't make any sense to anybody, right? But this makes a lot of sense. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, it's getting crazier. So I decided to write all the prefixes we're going to need um, in some cases. Let's just see what's going to happen as we go on. So we're done with Avogadro's number, and I want to talk about zillion. Now, what number is the number zillion? There is no such thing as a zillion. It's just an English word that people make up because Z is the last letter. It's when they want to describe a very big number that is bigger than anything else. They just say, it's a zillion. I called you a zillion times yesterday, which means it is indescribably large. That's it. It's not a number. It's just an English expression that is used. So, not a number. Let's go to this one. What is a Google? This is Google. Okay, it is the same word that you see on Google is just spelt differently. Some people say it was misspelt the first time and that was it. They just adopted Google instead of this Google spelling. Okay, I'm not sure of that story, but this is Google if you wrote out all the zeros after the one, 100 zeros. So it's a special name just because it has 100 zeros. So we're not following the convention here. If we were to follow this convention, how would you name this number? Well, all you have to do is take out the, the first three zeros. And now you ask yourself, how many sets of three zeros do I have now? Well, remember, we're using the short scale or the short convention. How many zeros do I have? Well, sets of three zeros is, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times four. That's 32. The word 32 in this convention is written as O, and there's 10. It is 10. Because there are 32, it is duo. This word is for 30 sets of 10, which, I mean, three sets of 10, which is tri gentilium. That's it. So instead of saying Google, you say it is 10, duo tri gentilium. That sounds like a different language. Okay, let's go to the next number. So we're done with Google. So what is centillion? You would wonder, why did we name centillion the one followed by 100 zeros? It sounds befitting, but that's not how you name it. You count the number of zeros after the first zero. So one centillion, one centillion after... The first set of threes, it has 100 sets of three. What would 100 sets of three zeros be? That's 300 zeros plus this zero. So it's going to be 10 to the 303. This is a centillion. But this is not a centillion. Even though it has 100 zeros, it is 10 duo trigentillion. See, that's why you should not name big numbers. They're so confusing. They're like the names of cities in a country you've never been to. Okay, 
Let's go. Let's end this. What is a Googleplex? Well, since we're dealing with big numbers now, the number of zeros following one for a Googleplex is if you put all of these zeros as the exponent of a 10. So it's equal to 10 raised to power this number. How many zeros does it have? Mm, it's going to have, it causes pain to think about it. Okay, I don't want to talk about it. Just think about how many zeros it will have. Just imagine when a Google, which has just 100, looks this way, this one is going to have 100 zeros. That's going to be insane. Okay, we don't want to talk about it. I'm just let it going to be. I'm just going to let it be. Okay, I'm getting to... to <laughs> twist my words okay so we've taken care of a Google Plex you know the difference between a Google and a centillion now and this is one number that I'll have to do a special video for it is called Graham's number and I know some of you already know about Graham's number but I'm just gonna touch on it briefly Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.